Hi, this is Rick Bice with Bice Fit Exercises on behalf of Edmonds Park and Recreation. Today we're going to go through a circuit training class. Uh, what we'll do is we'll alternate between strength training exercises for the muscles, bones, and connective tissues, and then cardiovascular exercise for the heart, lungs, and circulatory system. Uh, what we'll do, it's all timed, so what we'll do is we'll do uh, a minute on an exercise. We'll take a 30 second break. We'll do another minute on the same exercise or something very similar. And then we'll move on to the next exercise. So I'll call all those out uh, as they happen. Uh, what you'll need for this uh, exercise program today is a chair over here. Um, maybe some, some light to medium dumbbells and some resistance tubing or band. Uh, maybe light or medium, whatever you have on that. With or without handles, uh, doesn't matter on that. Um, we will begin with a warm up. We will go through the exercises, uh, then we'll finish off with a cool down and then some stretches at the end. Uh, this is all at your own pace. So we strive for, for a minute's worth of work. Uh, if you need to take your breaks you know, quicker than that, or if, if uh, by the end of the minute you're, you're not tired or fatigued, you could just go straight through uh, that break that we have. Uh, so it's all up to you, um, the kind of resistance you use, uh, whatever works for your body. Uh, make sure your surrounding area is, is clear, that you've got room to move around, you know, arms width sort of stuff at least. Uh, you know, you have a proper footwear for, for the floor that you have. You know, if, if you've got slippery hardwoods, make sure that you're wearing good shoes that, that aren't going to slip and slide. Uh, if you've got thick carpet, making sure that your feet aren't going to get you know, it isn't going to get uh, uh, caught on the carpet or something and, and trip you up. So uh, just being careful. All right, let's begin. All right, here we go. Let's get moving. Going for a warm up here. A little bit of side to side. A little bit of grabbing with the arms. Nice and gentle, nice and easy. Remember, warm up, we're just looking to increase blood flow, get the body warmed up, warm up the muscles, grease the joints up, bring nutrients and oxygen to the uh, muscles and joints we're gonna be using, stretch the lungs out. Just kind of mimic some of the movements that we'll be doing throughout our uh, cardio cardiovascular exercises or strength training. Again, just to just kind of wake them up. We do this for about two minutes. We got a minute 20 left and pretty gentle. We're not looking to elevate the heart rate like a cardiovascular workout. We're just trying to get the body moving a little bit. You might barely break a sweat, you know, at the end of two minutes. And you can do what I'm doing or something else. Just a consistent motion to get the body going. There you go, looking good. Nice and easy. I'm gonna move to a march here. Just marching up and down. If you want a little lower impact, keeping those toes on the ground and just marching with the heels. Or if impact is not an issue or problem with you, then just lifting those feet up. Got about 20 seconds. Let's go a nice wide march and back and forth to the arms. Nice big clap, squeeze those shoulder blades together at the back and back to narrow march. All right, nice job. Okay, so sufficiently warmed up. If you need more of a warm up, of course, you can always just pause the video and, and warm up more. Okay, so first off, we have the squat with heel raises. If you want something to help with balance, grab a chair, use a window seal, wall, whatever, something just to give you a hand if you need. What we're looking to do here is a squat. So feet about hip to shoulder width apart, toes are gonna flare out just slightly. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sink my hips down, sticking my rear out, head and chest are gonna face forward. 
I'm gonna go down as far as I feel comfortable and then up. And then what I'll do is I'll add a heel raise. So up on the toes and back down. And then down into my squat, up, heel raise, okay? It's gonna get a little balance component to it along with calves. Remember, head and chest faces forward. Rear sticks out, okay? We don't want those knees going forward, especially forward past the toes. We want your hips going down and back. Low back is straight, hence the uh, chest facing forward, head facing forward. If you want, you can use your arms to counterbalance yourself. And then how low you go is up to you. The lower you go, of course, the tougher it's gonna get. Or if you're holding dumbbells or kettlebells, you can add weight to yourself. I've got about 18 seconds. And again, trying to keep that balance and breathing the whole time, never holding your breath, always breathing. Got that sign for a reason there. Always a reminder. All right, nice job, take a break. So we got about a 30 second break, get some energy back into the muscles, catch your breath. Uh, remember to keep water or something nearby to you know, grab sips as you, as you get thirsty. Here we'll work on the quadriceps and the thighs. We're getting uh, gluteus muscles in the rear uh, and then the calf muscles, gastrocnemius with the uh, straight knee. Uh, abdominal muscles, spinal muscles, low back having to stabilize along with some of the other leg muscles. All right, let's get in position again. Let's try it again. Face forward a little more. And here we go, down and up. Let's begin. Remember how deep you go is up to you. You can also put the chair behind you. Have something just to catch you if you go down too low. Or, you know, to you can fully sit down and stand back up on the chair or just barely touch the chair and come back up if you want that behind you as a spotter or having it in front's nice because then it gives you something to hold on to if you need to for balance. I'm going a little more shallow on the squats. Got some knee issues going on still. So I'm going to baby this a little bit. You can go lower or more shallow all up to you. We've got less than 10 seconds. All right, nice job there, well done. Okay, so next one we have is a golfer's pickup with a row. We're gonna do the single arm. So grabbing one dumbbell and you'll want your chair or something around to hold on to on this one, unless you really, really feel confident and comfortable in your balance. So grabbing a dumbbell, here, keeping the hips forward. You're gonna keep your weight on one leg. You're gonna lean forward, hinging from the hips. And then as we do that, we're gonna get a couple rows in and then back up. So again, hold on or not, but we're hinging from the hips. That arm, elbow's gonna go up and back. Hand goes to your ribs. Low back is straight. And then use that muscle in the rump and your low back and the hamstring, the back of your thigh on that standing leg to bring you back upright. But again, try not to twist at all. Try to make sure hips are pointed forward. And squeeze that shoulder blade together towards your spine. You can do however many rows you want and stay in that position, or maybe you just do one row and come back up. It's up to you. The heavier the dumbbell, of course, the harder the exercise is for the row and especially this uh, golfer's pickup. You can switch legs at any time and arms. The leg that you're standing on can be straight or just barely bent. All right, take a break there. So here we're working upper back muscles, middle back muscles. We're getting some bicep. We're getting back of shoulder, okay? We're getting a lot of work, the back of the hamstring and the thigh 
in the rump area, the low back, abdominals are having to stabilize. Lots of moving pieces, this one. Really, you know, making sure that you're feeling comfortable with this, how low you go is up to you, okay? You can go pretty shallow or you can go, you know, fully deep, depending on how you feel, okay? Keep it comfortable, no pain or discomfort. Uh, and not something where you want to lose your balance and overstretch a muscle. So hold on if, you, if you're uh, really feeling you need to. I'm not working balance here myself. Just muscles. If you want more balance, of course, just don't hold on. And then really use those muscles along the low back and the rump. to get you back upright. Good firm grip on the dumbbell. Palm is facing in towards you. Fifteen seconds. And I'm just rowing twice on each one, but again, whatever's comfortable for you. Last one here. All right, nice job. Okay, so uh, you can get rid of your dumbbell, get rid of your chair. We've got a, uh, let's see, a low fly for the chest. And what you'll need is your uh, resistance tubing or band, whatever you're going to use for that. With or without handles, you don't need handles on this because most likely, um, you know, the band will be too long if you use your handles. So what we're doing on this one, uh, depending on how big of a rump you have, how much it sticks out, mine, mine doesn't much. So I'm going to need to squat down a little more just to hold that position so I can loop this under my tush here and then keeping the elbows fairly straight, I'm going to bring my hands together. Okay. Just like that. All right. I want to make sure this tube, you know, stands under my rump and doesn't slip up over my back okay so that's partly the reason why I'm, I'm taking a seat I'm trying to make my rump a little bigger give an anchor for this tubing okay and just kind of keep adjusting that if you feel that that tubing or band is kind of slipping out wants to you know you know slip up your up your back then just get down into a little bit lower squat adjust that band as you need to. Elbows are going to be fairly straight. I'm just bringing my hands together right at about chest height, face height. This is a low fly. So work on the chest muscles, but from a low position. Less than five seconds. All right, take a break there. All right, so we are getting a decent amount of pectoral and chest muscle. We're getting that front deltoid. Uh, triceps are having to stabilize. Arms are stabilizing a little bit. Abdominals, low back having to stabilize. Quadriceps and thighs and glutes having to hold us in that position. So again, another one with a lot of moving pieces. Uh, well, a lot of pieces working at least. May, you know, not necessarily moving, except for the arms and shoulders. But uh, muscles firing nevertheless. All right, so let's get back in position again. Go front here. So nice and wide with the feet, just like a squat, just like the squats we did, except now it's just a shallow squat. I want to go just deep enough to keep that band from, you know, slipping up. That's how deep I need to squat. You may need to squat a little deeper or not as much. And I'm just kind of leaning forward, hinging forward slightly, sticking my rump out. You can do this seated also if you just want to sit on that band. That can be done also. Hands are facing down so that my thumbs are coming together. And we got about 15 seconds. Try to keep those elbows fairly straight. Keep breathing. All right, nice job. 
Okay, get rid of those bands. We have a cardiovascular next. So grabbing a sip of water. We've got about a 35 second transition. Uh, otherwise, you can get going right away on cardio if you want. I'll grab a quick sip. All right, I'm gonna start off with a little bit of a knee curl. And we'll do an arm curl singles here. Again, you can do what I'm doing or something else. If you've got a you know stationary bicycle or elliptical machine, a rowing machine, treadmill, any of that sort of stuff can be used. Aerobic step or stairs. If you've got a jump rope, again, you know, dance moves. Whatever you want, whatever you can do that's consistent, that's gonna get your heart rate elevated, your breathing elevated. We go for about two minutes in, 25 seconds on average for cardio. We got a minute and 45 left here. All right, a little bit of side steps, get some low points. Just consistent motion. Think of the uh, talk test. I'm talking to you out loud. That means my heart rate probably around the 70% of my maximum range, which is good. Uh, good control, burning some good fat, easily uh, able to sustain that for the whole class. Now, if I can't talk because I'm too out of breath, um, heart rate's probably getting a little high and probably higher than I want for this class, especially for me because I have to talk and be understood. If you want more cardio, uh, then, you know, by all means, get going a little faster. You don't have to talk. And that'll get your heart rate up higher, which will work cardiovascular system a little more. Heart, lungs, and circulatory system. About 40 seconds. All right. Big clap here. Squeezing those shoulder blades together. All right. Let's go forward and back. A little reverse toe tap here. Elbows are straight. And I'm just kind of hinging forward slightly. So we're getting a little bit of endurance on the muscles and then heart and lungs are working. Less than 10 seconds. Keep strong. Remember good posture and breathing. Excellent, all right. Okay, seated lean back with a reverse fly. Now we're gonna do this without any kind of resistance. So you'll need your chair to take a seat. Now, what you wanna do is sit on the front portion of your chair. You don't wanna sit back against the back of the chair because then you won't have room to lean backwards. We want to lean back a little bit and engage these abdominal muscles, okay? So while I do that and get these muscles to work, kind of what we just did on our cardio, we're gonna keep our hands together, clap, Elbows go back, squeeze the shoulder blades together, try to relax your shoulders, and then come forward and back. Again, try to lean backwards the whole time. When those arms go back, of course, it gets a little tougher to keep leaning back and keep control. When you need a break, just sit upright. And you can still work that upper body and then lean back get that abdominal work. Now you don't want to lean back so far that your feet come off the ground. Now, if you want your feet to come off the ground, if you want a little bit more work, of course you can do that, or one foot off the ground. But in general, trying to keep both feet on the ground, nice and wide to give you a good stance uh, is gonna be the safest. Okay, we still got about 24 seconds here. Again, if I want a little more work, maybe I lift one foot off the ground or both feet off the ground. Of course, breathing the whole time, okay? Not holding your breath ever. Almost there. All right, take a break there. Relax those shoulders. So we're getting upper back muscles. We're working on postural muscles. A little bit of chest engaging. Um, and then quite a bit of deltoids in the front, middle, and back, having to keep those arms up the whole time in that position. 
Uh, and then of course abdominals. Rectus abdominis, kind of the major six pack doing a lot of the work. And then the other abdominals kind of uh, you know chipping in to, to stabilize. Hip flexors doing a little work. So again, catching your breath. A couple more seconds. Let's get back in position. And again, how far you lean back is up to you. And where you sit on that chair, just you know, making sure that it's stable. The chair's not gonna tilt on you or tip on you. All right, let's get going here. Keep breathing. Even if you, you know, if you're counting out loud, that uh, enables you to breathe. And really think about squeezing those shoulder blades together. Try not to hunch up. Think about hunching backwards. Squeezing those shoulder blades together. We got about 30 seconds. I can add a little bit of counterbalance here by bringing a leg up. Kind of depends how your body's made up too. If you're a little heavier on the top half, this is going to be a little tougher. Almost there. All right. Oof. Kind of glad that one's over. All right. So we have a side bend with a shoulder press. So you can get rid of your chair. Uh, this can be done seated if you want to, but in general, we're going to stand with this. Uh, grabbing, let's see, uh, one dumbbell here. One is all you need. So here, what we're going to do, nice and wide with the feet. You can go a little more narrow. It just depends on how stable you, you are and how stable you want to be with your balance. So what I'll do is I'm going to side bend just from the waist up. I'm not going to let my hips move at all. It's just from the waist up as far as I can. Come back upright. Bicep curl into this upper racked position for the dumbbell. And then a shoulder press up. And then back down. Reverse that arm curl. And then back into that side bend as far as I can. And I want my oblique to pull me back upright. Up here. And then that shoulder press. So the whole time, my palm is facing myself. Keep those abdominals tight. Nice and controlled and slow the whole time. Now on the way up, that curl, you could get that a little faster just to get in that racked position, but then nice and slow on the shoulder press and on the way down. Same thing with the side bend. But again, if you wanna speed that curl up a little bit and get a little momentum to get it up there, that's okay. And then that shoulder press is controlled. That curl going down is controlled, and so is your side bend. A couple more seconds here. You can switch hands at any time. All right, take a break. Or what I'll do is this next set, I will uh, switch hands to my left side. So what you're doing is you're working a little bit of bicep and shoulder, and then your shoulder press, triceps, uh, shoulders on, you know, on that shoulder press and your triceps. And then we're getting the opposite oblique, doing some work pulling you or allowing you to fall and then pulling you back upright. Again, breathing, keeping in control, firm grip, dry hands on those dumbbells. You don't want to dump something on yourself or your floor. And whatever stance gives you good support and balance. All right, remember good posture. So here we go, the other way now. And shoulder press and then back down nice and slow, reverse that curl. And then side bend, back upright, curl up, shoulder press, and down, reverse curl, and then that side bend. Just like that, about that speed. Good posture, breathing, maintain good control of that dumbbell. Of course, the heavier the dumbbell you have, the more work you're going to get on all uh, facets of this exercise here. Again, trying to keep those hips from moving. If you get side bending a little too low, those hips want to kick out to the opposite side. Five seconds. All right, nice job there. Well done. 
Okay, so next we've got a supine straight leg raise. So what we need is your, if you have a mat, uh, grabbing your exercise mat or your yoga mat, we're going to do something on the floor here. Mat's not necessary, of course. All depends on what's comfortable for you. So here we're going to lay on your back in that hook line position. Adjust the mic, sorry. All right, so hook line position here, knees up, feet flat. What we're going to do is that pelvic tilt. So I'm going to push my low back into the ground by rotating my hips and pushing my low back into the ground. So I'm going to bear down, tighten my abdominals as I do that. Now, once I've got that pelvic tilt, I'm going to straighten one leg at a time. I'm going to lower that leg as far as I feel comfortable to the ground or not, and then just back up to the height of my other leg. And then slow and controlled on the way down and back up. And then I can relax, relax that tilt, reset that tilt, and I can continue with the same leg or I can switch legs. Now you'll notice as that leg gets down towards the ground, that pelvic tilt wants to release. Take a break there. Um, and so what you want to do is, is make sure that you tilt and hold nice and tight. So even when that foot's coming close to the ground, you hold that tilt, that low back stays against the ground. If you feel you can't lower your leg too far, that's okay. Make a smaller range of motion. And switch legs at any time. All right, take a break there. I got about 30 second break. Um, again, we're working pelvic tilt. So the abdominal muscles, low back, hips, uh, and then we're getting some good hip flexor and quadricep in the thighs on this one. So as we tilt and hold, hip flexor has to do the work to lift that leg up. And then we're flexing and holding that thigh muscle, the quadricep. Toes are pointed straight up. And again, keeping that tilt on the way down and the leg stops right at about the height of your, your knee. Let's try it again. All right, second set. Keep breathing, always breathing. So tilt and hold, straighten one leg, flex that thigh muscle, and then lower that leg once or twice or however many times you want before you switch legs or take a break. How many you do, how long you hold, that's all up to you. Again, as long as you're keeping form, if you need more resistance, uh, you know, ankle cuff weight, that sort of stuff can uh, add a little bit more weight to your leg. Doing more repetitions before taking a break. And again, holding nice and tight on that pelvic tilt. And breathing. Real easy to stop breathing on this one. Remember to reset that tilt every time. Every time you take a break at least. All right, excellent. All right, that's all we got on that one. Next one is a cardio. So up we go. Going to get rid of this guy. Give myself some room for cardio. All right. So making sure you're feeling good, no lightheadedness or dizziness from getting up quick, getting ready for the cardio, grabbing a drink if you need to. We still got another 14 seconds of uh, transition here. Tough looking into the lights sometimes, hard to see now. Let's get moving. And off we go, about two minutes and 10 seconds left. All right, so I'm gonna do a little tap here reverse tap a little bit of a rotation in the torso and the hips as I do this reaching my arms the opposite direction bent forward hinged forward a little bit from the hips there to keep breathing give yourself enough room a good you know arms width all around you at least know what your uh, you know what your room is how your shoes are working on the carpet or the floors All right, back to a regular march here. Nice and easy narrow march. Let's go wide. A 
and back to narrow and wide looking good there and narrow nice quick march keep those arms pumping and wide and narrow excellent all right front toe tap with a little point and again you can do what i'm doing or something else as long as you're moving consistent and trying to get your heart rate and your breathing elevated for this you know two minute and ten second uh period of time that's all we're looking for but remember good posture remember breathing keep aware of your surroundings all right i'm gonna move to an uppercut with a side step here we got about 12 seconds we'll let's keep this one up for the till the end here looking good all right excellent okay so uh upper body figure eight so grab a dumbbell for this or kettlebell or you know if you got a bag of sugar so you know a heavy boot whatever whatever you're using for resistance something that you can grab and hold on to so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to hold this in front of me like this i'm going to do a figure eight pattern so this is all pretty much upper body so you can do this one sitting or standing but i'm going to pelvic tilt a little bit keep the abdominals tight all right now what i'll do is just basically a figure eight pattern okay and you can you know do it more higher and lower or more in the middle it all, it's all up to you you can get the the whole torso involved rotating a little bit or keep it in front of you up to you and you know play around with you know whatever you're holding see what's comfortable keeping those elbows fairly straight okay, just kind of playing around this sort of motion here and then take a break when you need to and then try again we got about 38 seconds here we're getting a lot of deltoid here chest is having to stabilize shoulder blades and lower back upper back having to stabilize and then of course hips and abdominals doing a little bit of work here again taking a break as you need to heavier the weight of course tougher it's gonna get got about 11 seconds looking good there if you want you can bend those elbows too all right take a break there bending the elbows of course is going to make it a lot easier do this exercise also you know so if you get a little tired with that upper or you know with the uh, straight arms those deltoids and the shoulders are, are you know really getting tired then just bend those elbows let the biceps uh, do a little bit of work too on that we got about 10 more seconds get some energy back in those those shoulders now remember good stabilization of the core nice wide stance your pelvic tilting a little bit so squeezing those cheeks together pelvis rotates forward keeping everything tight all right so wait again let's try it again so in position and i think i like it with the hands apart just a little bit see what feels comfortable for you and then of course how big this figure eight is is up to you feet are planted but i've got a little bit of a rotation in the hips and legs going controlled and then if i wanted a little more in front of me not so much torso and hips and then i can even get a little tired so now i'm going to switch this to a bent elbow for the last little bit we got about 12 seconds and it's basically a figure eight kind of the infinity sign if a letter or i'm sorry if a number eight was laying on its side all right excellent good work on those shoulders there those deltoids so a shrug with a shoulder blade squeeze so you're gonna need a couple dumbbells for this guy again 
I'm going to lighten things up here. So a dumbbell in each hand, again, standing, uh, you know, feet a good hip width apart. So what we're going to do is we're going to shrug up as high as we can. Elbows are straight, but shoulders are going up towards your ears and then back down. And then what we do is a shoulder blade squeeze. So now I'm bringing those arms and shoulders back behind me, squeezing my shoulder blades and then back to the, to the middle part and then up as high as I can, back down and back and behind, okay? So here, let's start up here. So back and forth. Again, a good firm grip on those dumbbells or kettlebells, whatever you're using. And I'm getting upper trapezius between the neck and shoulder. And then I'm getting some good rhomboids and uh, middle lats. I'm sorry, middle trapezius, that sort of stuff on the uh, shoulder blade squeeze here. Remember, good posture, standing up nice and tall, breathing, controlled. And elbows are just straight, arms are just dangling at your sides here. Nice and controlled. What do we got? Another 13 seconds. Again, this is all in the shoulders and shoulder blades. Abdominals are tight and braced. All right, take a break. And again, uh, how tough it gets mostly depends on how much weight you're using. The heavier the weights, of course, the more work, especially on the shrugs that you're going to get. Shoulder blade squeezes, you know, not too much. You're going to get those hands being pulled down, of course, um, having to stabilize those shoulder blades. But most of the shrug is, is where the weight's going to come in. All right, a couple more seconds of rest. Let our body's energy build back up real quick. And then we're going to finish off that energy for those muscles here. All right, so back in position, grabbing those weights again. And here we go. So we got to shrug up as high as we can and down, and then a shoulder blade squeeze. Shrug up nice and high, and then elbows and shoulders go back. Uh, well, actually, arms go back. You're not leading with the elbows or anything. You're just bringing those arms behind you, squeezing the shoulder blades. More in the shoulder blades than the arms and shoulders on that one. But it helps to bring those arms back just a little bit to give a good squeeze on those shoulder blades. And I'm squeezing them towards my spine as if, if I was, you know, squeezing a pencil between my shoulder blades. And we got about six seconds. Keep it going. Almost done. Keep breathing. All right. Excellent job there. Okay. So for our last one, tricep kickback and a knee curl. So get rid of your dumbbells and grab uh, your resistance tubing or band again. And again, don't need handles on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab closer to the end on one side. And then I'm going to start palm up. I'm going to wrap around once here. So what I want to do is... This hand is going to start kind of at the bottom of the ribs and then I'm going to straighten the elbow. Okay. This other arm is going to anchor and stay kind of in front. All right. And then I'm just going to straighten that elbow just like that. Work on the tricep muscle back of the arm. And then what I'll do is once I feel good about the arm, I'm just going to rock onto my other foot and then bend the knee. So I'm straightening the elbow and bending the knee here. If your coordination allows, go for that. Otherwise, break it up into different parts. Just the arm or just the leg. And we're just doing one side at a time. Second set, I will switch sides. We got about 28 seconds. This arm to my left is just anchoring. And then this arm to my right here, the one that's doing the straightening, it's getting that tricep muscle. And then I'm getting the hamstring muscle on the back of the thigh with that knee curl. Abdominals are tight. 
I'm bracing. I'm also breathing. All right, nice job. Take a break there. And so what I'll do is I'll switch sides to where now this time, this arm is going to do the straightening. I start with that palm up, give it a good wrap. Now where you wrap, of course, is going to depend and that's going to give you the resistance. If I wrap way over here, I don't have much resistance at all. If I wrap too close, now I can't do it all the way. So just kind of find, find the right spot for you, depending on your band, so that you can get a good tricep extension, okay? Adjust the resistance. Now let's get going here. So anchoring the front arm and using that back arm. And now I've got the tricep extension on my left arm and I'm doing a knee curl on my left leg. And all I'm doing is switching my weight, full weight to my standing leg, of course, as I bend my knee. Trying to work just the elbow, trying not to allow the shoulder to move at all. Shoulders are being steady, holding. This is all in the elbow and all in the knee. 15 seconds. The right arm, my anchor arm, is getting a little bit of work on the shoulders and rotator cuff. It's almost an external rotation to kind of hold this. All right, nice job. Let's get rid of your bands there. So we've got one more cardiovascular, uh, and then we'll finish off with um, some cool down and balance and stretching. Again, you know, maybe grab a sip of water here. Triceps are nice and tight from that one. We'll have to do a little bit of stretching on that. So you can get going right away on the cardio. Or we got about 12 seconds of transition here. So I'm going to do a little dynamic stretch. Getting a little bit of momentum. Bending that elbow really good. And it's going to get just a little bit of a pull on those triceps as I do this. As if I'm combing the side of my hair pretty quickly getting again some momentum using the weight of my arms to bend that elbow give a little pull on those triceps keep it comfortable just a little bit of a stretch here nothing painful nothing of discomfort of course all right I'm gonna switch and go a little faster with some cross-body bicep curls a little side to side kick here I'm going to slow things down. I feel my knee doing some clicking here, so I'm going to back off just a little bit. Uh, you go whatever speed works for you, however fast or slow you need to go, not only to appease any aches and pains, but also depending on the kind of workout you want to get with your heart and lungs and circulatory system. Nice and easy. All right, I'm going to move to a march here. Actually, more of a Let's get back to another hamstring curl. So we just did some of these on that exercise. We're going to do a little faster. Really tire those hamstrings out. And some more bicep curl here. Not crossbody though. There you go. Again, just continuous motion. How high you get that heart rate up really is determined by how fast you go and how, uh, you know, how many muscles you use at the same time. All right, so a little ladder climb here. We got about 24 seconds. Marching with a shoulder press. Think about uh, climbing a ladder, reaching up towards the next rung, stepping up towards the next rung. And you can do same side or opposites, whatever works for you. Looking great there. All right, step forward and back. Oh, and that's all we got, okay. So we're going to work on a little bit of cool down. So remember, cool down is just your, your opposite of warm up. We are actively trying to let your heart rate get back down to a, a good uh, beats per minute, usually around 100 beats per minute or lower. 
So same sort of movements as our cardio and our warm up, but just slower. So if you're doing something fast, dance moves or whatever, now we're just gonna slow things up for you know a minute or so, moving nice and easy. Great time to grab some water and just you know kind of walk around while you're drinking it. We don't want to stop moving at all during a cool down. We just want to move a little bit to keep that heart uh, pumping the blood around but not getting that heart rate up higher. So just letting it, letting it go down. So what we'll do is we're gonna add a little bit of balancing exercises to our cool down. So let's start with a little bit of heel walk. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk on my heels, keep my toes up in the air, okay? So a little bit of balance here, forward, backwards, or turning around. You can go side to side or if, depending on how much room you have, maybe just tick-tocking side to side, okay? All up to you. Keep in mind how big your space is and what's around you, right? So I'm working a little bit of balance. I'm cooling down, and I'm getting some work on my shins, shin muscles, the fronts of my lower leg. Excellent. Looking good there. Keeping your balance. Now we're going to switch this up to some toe walking. So now I'm working the calf muscles, a little bit of balance work, of course, still cooling down, still breathing, and I can go side to side or tick tock back and forth. Close one eye, close both eyes, just kind of play around with your balance. Excellent. Okay. All right, keep moving. So let's do a little bit of, uh, think about, uh, you know, if you were wearing clown shoes or, or scuba diving flippers on your feet, how if, you know, the, if they're long, you're having to really accentuate lifting your legs up, pumping your ankles to move those shoes out of the way so that you don't catch the toes on the flippers or the clown shoes. All right, so just moving around, walking around. We're working the hip flexors, some balance, slow and controlled mo movements. We're getting some range of motion on those ankles. And, you know, think about the longer those clown shoes or flippers are, the bigger motion you have to do. If you want it to be smaller, something easier, just pretend those clown shoes are, you know, maybe they're three or four inches bigger than your own shoes. So just kind of think about that and see what works for you. Okay, a little bit of tight rope walk here. Last part of our balance and cool down. So tight rope can be as wide as your hips, pretty easy. Or maybe it's as wide as your feet together. Or maybe it's as wide as, as one foot. Okay, so playing around with how wide that tight rope is. Trying not to look at your feet forwards and backwards again being aware of your surroundings especially if you're going backwards knowing where you are in your room and then how close your feet are together is up to you too if i do a full you know heel to toe narrow tightrope this is going to be the hardest especially if i'm going backwards if i close an eye or close both eyes makes it even harder of course so nice and controlled, whatever feels comfortable for you. Remember safety first, even, you know, doing this next to a wall so that you have your, your hands or fingers next to a wall, like in a hallway where you have a nice bit of room to walk. You can also just, you know, back and forth, forward and backwards, just kind of a tandem stamp stance if you don't have a lot of room here. Okay. Nice and easy, catching that balance, being ready to catch yourself if you lose your balance, right? That's a big part of injury prevention. Not only having great balance, but catching yourself. If you lose your balance or, or you step off a curb wrong and, and you know that you've just stepped off a curb wrong, being able to adjust your foot and space and stuff so that you land properly or so that you catch yourself from falling. Uh, balance, coordination, all that stuff mixes together. All right, let's uh, finish up with some stretches here. So first one we're going to do, we're going to stretch out the back of the hamstring. So 
toes and legs in front of me. I'm going to squat down and lean forward. I got my weight on my back leg. I'm digging in the heel on my front leg. And just leaning forward. I can even reach towards my knee or my toe. Get a good stretch in the back of my thigh or behind my knee. You may feel it on the calf or the rump or the low back. Real gentle. Good 15 to 30 second hold. Not jerking or bouncing. Nice static hold. Let's switch legs. And keep breathing, of course. Don't hold your breath. And just try to relax that leg. I'm going to relax that front leg that I'm trying to stretch. There we go. Looking good there. Low back is straight. I'm hinging forward. I'm not just bending my back. All right, let's try another stretch. So pelvic tilt like we did laying on our back. So bring those hips forward. I'm going to straighten out that low back. I'm going to squeeze the cheeks together on my rump. Reach out in front of me. Palms facing me. Fingers interlocked. And I'm just going to press away. Press my hands away from my body. Straightening those elbows. My upper and middle back are going to round out. Head just stays neutral. I'm breathing. I get a little bit of a stretch in my forearms. My upper back, middle back. Low back is straight. All right, nice job here. Last stretch, arms up. So in the 90-90 position. And now I'm going to bring those elbows backwards, squeezing my shoulder blades together. We've done a lot of this today. But now we're doing it to stretch the chest and the fronts of the shoulders. So we're holding this position, really pushing the chest out. You can also bring those hands together or behind the ears of the head. Again, keeping those elbows backwards, squeezing those shoulder blades together. Stretching out the chest. Nice deep breathing. Let's straighten those elbows. Palms are up, thumbs are back. Again, bringing those hands and arms backwards. And now I'm going to dip the fingers down. So I'm going to get a good stretch on my forearms and wrists the palm my palms feel it a little bit all right give everything a little shake out there all right nice job today well done thanks for being here